Susanna Hanuf explains that both Christians and Muslims believe in the God originally described in the Jewish faith and that these three religions are closely related. Those of us humans who are Muslim believe that people should not lie, cheat, steal, or kill. Muhammad was born in the year 570 AD, which is the year zero in the Islamic calendar. He was born in Mecca, which was already a large commercial city. As was customary for nobles during childhood, he lived for a year or two with a Bedouin family. During his 20s, he worked as a merchant trading with caravans, and he married and had two boys and four girls. In his 40s, he began to meditate in a cave on Mount Hira outside of Mecca. There, the angel Gabriel began to recite the Quran to Muhammad. For the next decade, Muhammad preached publicly about his message from God. We will go into more detail about the Muslim view of the world to help Westerners have an accurate understanding of Islam. After carefully comparing your own views with those given here, you will better understand your own views and those of others. Islam means submission and peace. Submission to the will of God means obeying His commands concerning moral and spiritual behavior and results in a life of inner peace. A Muslim is one who believes in God, that God is the only deity, and that Muhammad was his messenger. God does not appear in front of mere humans because his infiniteness would overwhelm their senses. Instead, he has made his wishes known through a series of messengers that included Abraham, Moses, and Jesus, and ended with Muhammad, who is the last messenger and who God caused to write the Quran. The word Quran means recitation. It contains the final and complete message for us. The chapters of the Quran speak to both men and women. The details of Muhammad's life were recorded while he was alive. He lived during the years 570 through 632 AD. He was a father, husband, friend, ruler, statesman, and was a descendant of Abraham's. The Quran expressly forbids certain things, and anything that leads to a forbidden thing is also forbidden. If something is not expressly forbidden, then it is allowed. The Quran is also a source of Islamic legislation. The Quran is still written in its original Arabic language. It has not been repeatedly translated or altered through time. The message from the prophets was that God created the universe and made laws that govern our conduct and that we are accountable to Him for the way in which we live our lives. Muhammad also gave practical examples of how to behave and interact with family, friends, and neighbors in a book of his own writings called the Hadith. Islam teaches that mere beliefs will not change a person. For a religion to be effective, it must demand something of you. Your daily life must be affected by its obligations. Islam strives to instill an attitude toward life, family, manners and worship and thus free a human from domination by his or her animal aspects. Islam governs the total person and the community of persons. Islam says that there is another realm that you cannot perceive. You came from this realm and you will return to it when you die. God is that other realm. You are in this world to be tested. Islam believes that God is the supreme being who created and sustains the universe. He made the laws that govern the way the universe functions. He created humans to acknowledge, worship, and obey Him, and to take care of our society in His just and righteous manner. He also made permanent laws for the moral and spiritual guidance of humans. People cannot change these laws, only God can. 
He knows what is good for his creatures. The law applied to each individual and to society as a whole. There is no separation of church and state because you cannot separate a person into two pieces. God didn't create the world and then simply leave it to function on its own. He watches over each minute portion of his world and over each person too. He decides what will happen to you from moment to moment. He likes to see you striving to do your best. This is your duty. Rather than sitting back and letting fate take its own course. Humans do not know their own destiny. They must strive to attempt all possibilities. After you have made all efforts, then God will decide what to send for you. A Muslim has belief in the meaningfulness and purposefulness of all that God decides to make happen and has trust, dependence, and submission to the Creator. Even if you find your life being threatened by another person, you do not have to worry. That person is not going to harm you unless God decides you should be harmed and causes that person to harm you. The decision will be God's, not that other person's, and you should submit to his decision. Each person has the free will to submit to God. Muslims have inner peace, certainty, and confidence even in the face of affliction because they know that God controls everything. Muslims are constantly aware that God is watching in judgment of their actions. This also means that they do not have to be concerned with any lesser authority. When people obey and serve God, then they are freed from obeying and serving anything less than God. God gave us freedom of choice, judgment of right and wrong, an immortal soul, and the abilities to feel, think, and act. He did not give these things to the other creatures. He wants us to pass knowledge to others. God wants humans to use the minds that he gave them and he wants people to use the freedom of choice that he gave them to choose voluntarily to act in the manner that he has instructed. People will then fulfill the entrusted responsibilities and will not choose to follow random desires. A mere human cannot figure out God's purpose for humankind, the reason that humans have been placed on this earth, the role and destiny of humans, the meaning of life, the reason for pain and suffering, nor God's nature, attributes, and relation with humans. These things can only be revealed to humans by God, as he did for Muhammad. A significant part of Islamic faith has to do with the acknowledgement that Muhammad is the messenger of God. In the past, we were mainly farmers who were more directly dependent on God's sun and rain and such. There had been less range in our goals for life. With today's technology, we feel farther removed from the natural world, so that it is harder to see that God is directly involved in each moment of our life. Remember that no one but God controls your heart, lungs, aging, and even your career. We see the utter powerlessness of humans and our machines when faced with a crisis that only God controls. In fact, he controls every atom within your body and within your machinery. At the moment of death, each person realizes that no one but God is in control of his or her destiny. Death is the return of the soul to the one who gave it. The Muslim must worship and pray at least five times per day. This occurs at sunrise when you would like to be sleeping, at noon and again in the afternoon while you would rather be concentrating on work, and at sunset and nighttime when you would be preparing for sleep. This act of worship is more than a prayer in the Christian sense because it includes supplication to God and glorification of Him. God does not need your worship. Prayers are meant to keep you in contact with God, to strengthen your submission to Him, and to solidify your character. The timing of daily worship is meant to build discipline and to mold you into a faithful servant who lives according to God's prescribed manner. 
Daily worship is done in large groups to reinforce the ties of fellowship and affection among Muslims. At any moment of the day, the time of worship and prayer will be occurring in some region of the world. For one month per year, the Ramadan month, the Muslim must fast from food, water, and marital sex during the daylight hours. This is also a time for reading the entire Quran, restraining the tongue and temper, and for doing other devotional exercises. The Ramadan month cycles throughout the 12 month year. Once per year you must donate about 2.5% of your assets either to help the poor or to further the cause of Islam. You should donate the things that are a source of your profit and are not needed for your immediate needs. You might choose to donate to church construction or operation. You can also give a meal to another person or forgive a debt. Do not brag about your gifts. The wealth belongs to God, not to you. God has temporarily entrusted it with you to share with your family and others. You should give whatever is beyond your needs. This helps to eliminate the bitterness between rich and poor and equalizes wealth without banning private property or requiring that all persons have equal wealth. Do not spend for luxury or to impress others. Materialism is to be avoided. If you manage to obtain every material possession, then what would you do? People need something more significant with which to be concerned. The most precious things are never material things. The dog-eat-dog -dog pursuit of self-interest, as is occurring in many parts of the world today, has no real benefit. It is alright to spend a reasonable amount of money on yourself and your family, but love of wealth and luxuries is forbidden. Material things should never become the primary goal of your life. It is a sin to be lazy and to ask for a handout. Instead of simply giving a handout to a person, it is better to pay them to work. God likes for everyone to strive to do their best and to utilize all of their talents. God will judge you by how much you accomplish with your talents. Muslims must strive for self-improvement, to fulfill their obligations, and to utilize their talents. Muslims have a responsibility to improve society and must also strive to end injustice. They must fight tyranny, corruption, and evil. You must help others against injustice and refrain others from doing injustice. Striving is the path to God. The word jihad means a striving and is often mistranslated as holy war. Throughout the world we all strive to end poverty, hunger, and hopelessness. This striving is a jihad. It is a religious duty to seek knowledge, including knowledge of Islam, secular knowledge, and the knowledge of other cultures. You should seek knowledge for its own sake, and you have an obligation to teach your knowledge to others. There is a religious obligation to improve and administer society and to develop science, industry, technology, and human potential. Muslims must also strive to make a pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in their lives. Everyone dresses alike during the pilgrimage and while at Mecca also. This means that you bring just your own character and personality and not your trappings of wealth and social position. This makes everyone feel as Muslim fellows. The five acts of worship described in the preceding moments must be performed by every Muslim. The Muslim must declare faith in one God and acknowledge that Muhammad was his final messenger. The Muslim must worship and pray five times per day, pay the annual poor due donation, fast during daylight hours one month per year, and have a pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in his or her lifetime. These five acts of worship strengthen your sense of submission to God and require your soul, mind, feelings, body needs, and appetites along with your time, energy, and possessions. In this way, 
Islam demands something of you and strives to improve your behavior. Ownership of property and engagement in trade and business are encouraged, but it is prohibited to gain wealth by charging interest. You must directly work for your income. You cannot make a living off the efforts of others. Since it is forbidden to act in any manner that harms people or society, the business cannot manufacture things that are harmful to society. Harmful things include alcohol, drugs, or the promotion of non-marital sex. Advertising that promotes excessive materialism is not allowed. Society is to prosper by cooperation and mutual assistance, not by the exploitation of one group by another. Whenever there is a group of two or more persons, they should select one to function as the leader. The leader has no special privileges and is accountable to God. He is not in office for his own interest but to serve the people. He must consult the people. The state guarantees the right of protection of your person, property, honor, business, travel, and education. Justice must be impartial and blind to race, religion, wealth, social status, and governmental position. Islam does not force anyone to follow Islam. Only God can grant or deny this choice. A person cannot promote atheism, violence, or communism because these things are harmful to society. There has been some recent tension between Muslim and Western nations. Islamic peoples object to the injustice of those Western governments and corporations who interfere within Muslim lands in an attempt to control their assets and economic activities. Whenever people argue, each should ask the other to explain the injustice that has caused their anger. Each will learn something about themselves and perhaps become more just in their actions. All peoples agree on the sort of things that make for good personal character. These things are often summarized by our golden rule. The following statements contain a list of specific character traits that Islam views to be representative of a good person. First, treat others as you would want to be treated. This includes family, friends, other Muslims, non-Muslims, and enemies too. Love for your brother what you would love for yourself. If you help or forgive another person, then God will help and forgive you, especially on Resurrection Day. These guidelines include your behavior with others, your daily business relations with others, and the behavior of every organization, including the state. Life is sacred. Do not kill except in self-defense, in a righteous war, or for the state after due process. Resist injustice, tyranny, and oppression by all means, even when it is done by the state. If your brother acts with injustice, then stop him from doing that. Have respect for property. Do not steal. If you are starving, then it is okay to steal, but with widespread charity, stealing due to starvation will not occur. Avoid hypocrisy, greed, selfishness, envy, and the desire for reputation and power. Be sincere and be open and straightforward by expressing complaints directly to the offender's face rather than by talking behind this person's back. Have integrity. Be truthful and honest. Keep your commitments and practice fair dealing. Control your temper. Exercise self-control by not indulging in excessive pleasure or luxury. Make allowance for the faults of others. Retaliation in kind is allowed, but you are urged to forgive and to show mercy and compassion. Islam discourages asceticism and excess. Practice humility, patience, endurance, courage, dignity, honor, respect, and thankfulness. Wealth and social status are not as important as our faith and God consciousness. Don't gossip, pry, be suspicious, or interfere in the lives of others. 
exercise purity, modesty, and chastity. In the culture of Islamic nations, women's dress follows the Islamic concept of womanhood just as Western women's dress follows the Western concept of womanhood. Do not dress to attract attention to yourself because your character is more important than is your dress. A woman's beauty and sexual attributes are not for public display. They are reserved for her husband. She should dress such that only her hands and face are visible. Western flaunting and sexual innuendo are shocking to Muslims. When a woman dresses modestly, then her interactions with men will remain with the business at hand. If she dresses for show, then every interaction with men is reduced to attempts at sexuality. A Western ideal states that one should love a person for their internal beauty because outer beauty is only skin deep. If one can see nothing except the eyes of a woman, then a man's love for her can be based on nothing but her internal beauty. Keep men and women apart in schools, hospitals, and such to avoid temptation. The aging Muslim woman becomes increasingly respected instead of being treated as a person of decreasing beauty and sexuality. Sex dominates Western life. This blind physical desire disrupt society. A marriage is based on the common belief in God and in Islamic ways, not on romance. Premarital dating is prohibited. This provides a strong foundation for building together the lives of two spouses. We strive to maintain harmony with our spouse and to show proper care and training for our children. Babies sleep with their parents. Parents should show their children that the rules were not invented by them, but are God's rules, and that parents and society as a whole follow the same rules too. A child should be praying five times per day by the age of ten. By the middle teens, they should be aware of their future roles and responsible for their own actions. This is the reason that Iranians vote at age fifteen. Do not show cruelty or irresponsibility toward family members. Show obedience and respect to your parents and relatives. Family members can never break their ties. Take care of all family members, especially your aged parents. No aged family member should live alone. Marriage, building a home, and raising a family is the completion of your faith. God does not like divorce, but he will allow it after the other family members have been unsuccessful in their attempts to reconcile the two spouses. Orphans are to be raised by family members instead of being adopted to strangers. Babysitters should be the other family members, not strangers. Be helpful and kind to everyone, even to non-Muslims, because all persons are equally God's creations. Be charitable, generous, and show hospitality. Be polite, considerate, and well-mannered. Tell visitors that your home is their home. For cultural manners, understand that while visiting, it is impolite to stay longer than three days. Eat in moderation. The food meant for one group of persons can easily feed twice that number. Since it is rewarding to share food, give leftover food to someone else rather than throw it away. Islam is a way of life involving the entire person. It demands effort from you rather than just asking you to behave properly. A person will have respect only for that which they strive. Seek knowledge and develop your skills and talents. Show children love, security, warmth, and affection so that they will become cheerful, good human persons with loyalty in relationships. They will then be able to develop their own warm ties with family and friends. Muslims believe that Jesus was the son of the Virgin Mary and that God can cause a person to be born in any manner that he chooses. 
God is infinite. Because he is much more than a mere person, he cannot have a son who is a mere person. For this reason, Muslims do not believe that Jesus was the Son of God. The Quran has an entire chapter about Mary. Muslims believe that Jesus never said that he was the Son of God and that he did not want to become the basis of a new religion. He thought that he was just one in a series of messengers. Jesus wrote about God's revelations. After he died, the later prophets began to write more about Jesus than about the revelations of Jesus. Muslims say that after Jesus had died, the new Christian church decided that he was divine. Muslims believe in one God, not two. They feel that in some ways they have remained closer to the teachings of Jesus than have the Christians. Muslims do not believe in the Catholic idea of original sin, that you must be saved from eternal damnation by accepting Jesus as your Savior. Instead, Islam teaches that we are born innocent and sinless and that we are responsible for our own actions through which we add to our character. Islam does not have an equivalent of the papal authority. Muslims share much in common with Christians and Jews. Some Muslims feel that Jewish Zionists are acting in an unjust manner. My friend Ali explains that Islam consists of Quran, Sunnah, Hadith, Fiqh, Kalam, and Sharia, which most Islamic countries are not using anymore. Although there are disagreements about which to apply in Muslim societies, there is one thing that is certain for every society, and it is the Quran.